Alright, so this video is on if you have a Winnebago with a basement air or a Forest River River Ranch with a basement air. I'm going to install soft start. It takes two soft starts because there's two compressors. And this is going to be the process of how to wire the soft start because I didn't find any videos online. And reading the manual is not as straightforward as doing the repairs. So hopefully I don't mess nothing up. I'm going to start over here. You got to take this screen off because your, um, your electrical panel where your capacitors are are on this side. Alrighty. You'll have to take this off, like I said, in order to access the electrical enclosure that has the capacitors. This is also siliconed on so be careful when you're pulling off you'll bend it up real good. Alright, so I'm going to pause the video and I'll start it when all this is ready to come off. It's going to take me a few minutes. Okay, so I got all the oh, screws out. Probably want to get a putty knife. You're going to have to get all the caulking off. Or not, I've had this off half a dozen times back to 21. And it's having to work on this air conditioner all the time. But I think when I took it back to Forest River, they took it off again and they put it back on. Good, that was it. Holy cow, they got our seal on there. You know, you both just putty as long as you don't make a mess, it'll go right back on. <laughs> and seal. Wow. Holy cow. I got it on there. Good now. It was not on here this good when I originally bought the unit. Worst River did a bunch of warranty work for me. And uh, I fixed her up. Step on gum and get it on your shoe. You don't want to get any on this coil either. Put this 
up. You don't want to get it in the dirt. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to take this access panel off right here. We need one Phillips screwdriver right there. All right. So keep in mind, this is energized right now behind here. I'm off grid, I'm on solar. Part of the reason I'm doing the easy start, really for load sharing when you're at a 30 amp connection or on a small generator. I don't really want to try and run off my solar system. I mean, I'll test it. But look at this rat's nest. <laughs> so that control board, while we got the camera here, really close to the wall. And what I had before, another AC problem I had, yeah, was this metal board. I mean, you're talking really close. So this wall was sweating because I was in Pennsylvania. Humidity, water droplets got behind this board and shorted it out. This board's got like a fiber board behind it, almost like what you see inside lithium batteries when they put the cells together. The original one did not. So electrical part of the board was just hair off this metal wall and it shorted out also there's an overload switch right there if your bearing is locking up you'll start throwing that overload switch right here that red button but let me uh, also right here is your AC in so we're going to put a clamp on amp meter on both these lines. I'm going to fire up the AC because we're hooked to a solar trailer with an 8,000 watt inverter. So we're going to hook to these lines and I'm going to get the amp draw before the easy start is installed. Alright, so I've got two uh, amp meters on there. Check the inrush. I have a watchdog on this unit too. I want to say before checking my watchdog, I think it's about 1500 watts per compressor. That's going to depend on how hot it is, too. So right now, the RV is using just under 200 watts. So i got to switch over and turn the AC on. Connect to the Wi-Fi. Bring up the app that we all love. Bluetooth and not Wi-Fi. I think they changed this out also on the 23 and newer river ranches. Okay, so we're going to go to uh, cool only. I didn't get a reading on this one, or this one. Yeah, the compressor might not be kicked on yet. Thirteen hundred watts. Oh, and oh. So this meter here showed 16 amps, now it's on 11. Why is this one? This one's showing 13 amps, this one's showing 11, that's running. So let me see if I can get the spike. I didn't report it, we should have reported it. So you got basically 12 amps on each one, this is 12.8. This is 11.3. Go back to the app. Right. Well, 
this up. That's the fan, it'll kick back on for a minute. Two and a half amps with the fan, and that one's pulling nothing, it's compressor only probably. We'll give that a minute, I'm gonna take the camera out of this tripod too. All right, so this meter has a min max. I have it on min max, currently showing, sorry, this meter, 1.6 amps, but that's just the max it seems when I hit the button. This one's on zero, so we're trying to catch the inrush. Um, bump the air back down. Just kicked on. So, so far that says 2.8. Probably going to want to run for a minute. So far, just the fan is running. I let it sit for like a minute, maybe two. Get this reset right here. Here we go. Twenty amps. Min max on that one didn't do anything. Why this clamp is not working right? Right now, running that one's 15 amps. There's the other compressor. Didn't record it. I don't like it. Record it. DC. Went back to DC. Try to catch that one again. So it's 13 running. Almost 14. 13. Almost 14. So you might as well say 14. And it's it's like 65 degrees out here. So it's not. If you were like in Florida or somewhere hot, uh, it would be. Probably add two or three amps to it. I'm going to shut it off again. I'll give it two minutes and try it again. Okay, we're going to do an inrush. I swapped the meters around. Now, this is the one that's set on inrush, and this one's set on max. In, in so, min max. This one's showing 83, no, 0.83, so it hasn't registered anything yet. That one's showing 32 max. So we know that running this one is 14 amps, almost 15, so in rush was 32. So this one shows. There that one goes. Darn it, it didn't record. Alright, let me take it off in rush. So it's showing 15 amps running almost. Shut her off again. Try it one more time. I'll just leave this one off at in rush so it just sees whatever it sees. Okay, we'll try this again. I got the meter swapped. 
This one is now on min max. That one's just on auto. So we know before we got what 36 on that one on inrush. See if it shows the same. Well, that's the fan, the blower. Yeah, see that one, it didn't go as high, it just shows you what the running is. It's one a minute, so she goes to. sense. So I got 36 on this one earlier, 35. So the end rush on both of them is about 35. Turn the AC off of that. So all together AC pulls about 70 amps on startup. Alright so now I'm going to be working on the air conditioner starting the easy start or soft start install so we want to make sure our power is killed which I haven't so we're going to test the meter it's on voltage it's on AC voltage we should get 120 on both legs yeah. 121 and then same thing over here Across the two, should be 220, 240. So we know our meter works. Now we're going to go kill the breakers and test it again. Alrighty, we got the power turned off. I double check it. Hang on. 14 volts. So that's I don't know what that is, but it doesn't have power. 17 volts, and then across the two, 2.8 volts. So hang on, I'll go back. 17 volts. That would die down. Maybe that's back feed from the capacitors or something. We'll give it a little while because I want the capacitors to have plenty of time to drain. Because uh, with the easy start or soft start, you got to tie into those. So I'm starting to install. Another thing I noticed is the indicator light on this control board was still blinking. So we still have DC power. So I disconnected this input plug. Let's see if we can show it to you. There it goes. This plug right here it just pops out. That's all the input uh, thermostat control and power. DC wise. So I want to make sure everything's disconnected because I don't want to mess the computer board up. Here's the phosphate tip. It's like glued in there. No. So, I'll just open that 
backward. Here's the instructions. This covers all your roof mounted air conditioners. I have this model, I believe. Maybe I have the 64. Which one do I have? I have the 364X20. So it's good for two and a half horsepower each. If you're going to have like a, a single residential house air conditioner, like a big one, you probably want the five horsepower. Tells us what all the codes mean. some extra uh, plug connectors and stuff but I guess not I'll be supplying that myself so here's the unit problem is this there's not a lot of room in here I'm gonna have to really fish this in here um, I'll turn this back on once I get it I'm gonna get it not mounted but where it will be mounted so I can fish the wires in and then I'll start messing with the wires <coughs> Alright, so so far what I've done is I started drilling a hole right here. There's already a hole right here. I'll probably drill another one. I'm going to put it right here because really it's the only spot it had to fit. I'm just going to put two of them down here. I'll put some rubber feet underneath them so they're not sitting flat in case a little bit of water gets in here. Um, but right now I have a bunch of these. So I'm going to try and get that installed. Gonna film certain parts. I don't think you guys care too much. You can figure all this out. You really just real probably curious for the wiring. So that's not quite big enough. It's almost. Let me make sure it's big enough for this. Of course, they put these ends on here already. Turkeys. I might not be able to use this because they have these on here. This does have an insulator on it, so I could probably just get by with going through the hole, but gosh dang it, they wouldn't have put those on here. I don't really want to go too much bigger. I mean, I have a bigger one, let's see. Oh, I got so much room in there. Yeah, so I got a huge one. And I really don't want to cut these. I mean, I can, but holy cow. Alright. What I'll do is I'll just use this. And I'll put a clamp on it so that it can't move a lot and these wires aren't touching. After I get the other hole done, I gotta vacuum out all this, of course.
so there's all kind of metal shading just from them installing the screen. That's where your water drips down, right there in that little black tray. Okay. In this some tie wraps should be fine. There we go. So I'll get this right here. Go ahead and get my other hole drilled right here so I can be done drilling holes. So you see this rat's nest of wiring you have to deal with. Plus the fact that this board right here didn't have the protective cover on the back. The new one did. So that's why I know it's supposed to have one. It came in with a new one. I want to give a little shout out. UC Inspector for Coleman. 597. Needs some retraining. So I have both easy starts down here. I'm going to put some rubber feet underneath them just so they're not sitting flat because this does get rain potentially in here. Just don't want to be able to get submerged. Um, both cables are coming through here, through here, and now we're going to start the wiring process. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything wired up, and then I'll start the camera up and I'll go over each wire, what I did. Camera. So what we have here... says so on compressor one your white wire coming from item one so if you look at item one take the page out move it this page right here run capacitor so the compressor run capacitors are these two big ones on the right these are the fan that's the fan and these are the starts these two little black ones if you guys can see that let me switch this around So, we're going to win. All right. So, here's your run capacitors. That's your fan capacitor. These are your start capacitors. So, these are your run capacitors. That's the one we're going to first. Go back to the easy start. Instructions compressor one, so one we're doing first. The brown wire on here is gonna we're gonna cut the wire 
white wire that would go to the it goes to the compressor. We're going to tie into the brown wire. So we're going to cut the white wire off the start off the run capacitor. So you look at the run capacitors. They color code them right. There's only there's only one white wire. It's right there. So I don't really have to cut it. I just have to pull it off. So let me do that. So I pulled this white wire off. There's actually two white wires. See, that's what they don't tell you. But this one goes up here, which goes into the compressor, runs around into the compressor. This little one, I traced it down, right? So the compressor should have a thick, heavy wire. This little one goes down here, which is your neutral. Actually, that might not be the right one either, because there's two big white ones. Uh, this is crazy. They use all the same colors. So this thick white wire goes in here, and this thick one goes up here. I'm supposed to remove one of these white wires, the one that goes to the compressor. So I went around on the inside, and it appears this one it goes to the compressor. And there's an indoor blower right here. So I'm surmising this one goes to the indoor blower. Be nice if it was labeled okay so we have the white wire that we believe is going to the compressor removed off the run capacitor the easy start brown wire i had to put terminal on it i'm going to get ready to heat shrink it's been uh, clamped already Yeah, here. We can beat the wasp or something. Like that. So I have the brown and white connected. I got an extra piece of heat shrink that once I test everything and it works, I'll slide this over this connector and heat shrink it so it doesn't want to get pulled loose. All right, so the compressor white is now hooked to the brown on the easy start. Now we have to take the yellow wire off that same terminal off the capacitor to item two, which I believe is the start capacitor. Let's go to the item. Oh, shit. So item two is a start capacitor. So double check there. And start capacitor are these two black ones right here. So I need to take the yellow wire off of here, off the start capacitor. Wires. Basically, I just, oh, just follow it over. So here's the yellow wire. Pull this out. Also, take pictures. If you do this job, take a lot of pictures in case you gotta put this back the way you found it. So I had to put the camera down because this yellow wire had this. Ow. Got a little shock there. My knee's touching the RV. So this yellow wire, faster stay charged for a while, was tied into here and it had this little jumper on it and it pulled this other white wire off. So I put it back on. So now I'm going to pull this yellow wire off. This is just disconnected. All right, let's go back to our instructions. They're clearly showing 
the yellow wire going here off where I just tied in this brown wire disconnect so basically they're eliminating the start capacitor because these are going to do the starting so I now have that yellow wire off now it says take the red wire off the same capacitor from the same capacitor so there's two red wires but there's two capacitors here so the same capacitor this red wire is going to come off Here, pull the red wire off. I mean, you really could leave it on, take it off here, and leave it on here and just tie it back, but whatever. If all this works, I'm going to come out here because these are getting basically disconnected. I'm just going to remove them. Oh, which are kind of. Tuck this back for now because hang on, I gotta get this wire off. Hang on. So this whole thing came off to start capacitor. This box I think is like a timer. Red wire was tied to it. This capacitor is getting disconnected, so I took the whole thing off. Okay, so now it's disconnected. Now we're gonna take the orange wire and connect up. To this side of the run capacitor where we just took the red wire off of so this is the orange wire right here it's going to go on there all right so now this orange wire off the easy start goes right here on this run capacitor so it's two out of the four wires hooked up all right now it says the black one is going to go up to these so i'll take that in a minute the blue one in this picture, which tells you is white, probably couldn't use white because of the paper, is going to go to where we disconnected these other wires earlier. That looks loose. Let me make sure that's on good. So I had to uh, chip away a little bit at this plastic protector because this white one, the yellow part, was hitting. It wouldn't go down all the way. So now. Down on the way. Come on. I don't want it to go on there. Okay, there. So now the white wire is on here. Everything is hooked up to this black one. It goes up to one of these relays here. So I still have to figure that out. Hang on. So one thing to be careful about on this relay right here, I think it's actually upside down in this diagram. If you look at one, two, four, six, and eight, and here you have two, four, six, eight. On here, let me get my flashlight. They're actually labeled the opposite. Plus, there's extra plugs on here that aren't being used. Okay. So on the other page, by the way, this is not the easy start. This is easy start instructions, but I also downloaded the manual on this air conditioner. So it says, it goes to this relay box, but it doesn't tell you which one it is. But if you look, it says seven. Seven up here, compressor relay. So to verify which one, there's the manual. That's why you need the manual. We want the compressor relay. So right here, we want to verify. Remember, we're working on compressor one so far. We're going to go to compressor one relay, compressor two relay. So according to this, the top one is compressor one relay. See how it shows those four and those two? So it shows those four and those two. The problem is... On here, you follow this right here. So that must not be compressor one because that says that that's a black wire. We don't have a black wire on the top one. So let's go over to here. Um, it's an orange wire. 
that's on compressor two. Compressor two has orange wires. See, I got it. Well, they both have orange wires. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, but the top one doesn't have a black wire. That's the problem. It's showing this as a black wire off the compressor switch. So, this is terminal six. That is compressor one. That's what's confusing me. So let's look. Number one is at the top. Two is the far right. Four, zero, six, and eight. So it's going to spot six. Spot six on here is, I believe... Tell us like a zero. Oh, top right. Huh. See, six over here is being used, six over here is not. So I gotta do some figure. Right, so here's what I figured out on these. These two are actually backward. Compressor one is here, compressor two is here. Because I trace the wires down. On these wires, see how there's a spacing in between and the color code, which one, blue is on bottom here, and then the red's right here. And what I ended up having to do was trace the wires down on here to figure out which we want to deal with compressor one right now. So trace these wires down, and it showed me that that corner is number six. See this one. If you look at two and four, there's no wires on it. This one does, and the wires on two and four here match. And this one is empty. So it's this black wire right here, which goes to the compressor, that I gotta tie in this one somehow. All right, so I got the last black wire on the easy start, and it is tied in with this compressor wire off the relay in position six. So I've got to take the strain relief off of here. Like that. And we'll test it. If that works, and I'll secure this whole side. And then we'll do the other one. Holy cow. What a pain. Probably just go ahead and take these capacitors out. I'm pretty sure this one's getting eliminated next. Before I forget, let me hook up my 12 volt and my thermostat back up. We're up the AC power to it. There's our green light popping on. You can actually count the blinks, and it's supposed to be a code reader, basically. And then this one right here. Point to... Pull this out because I think it's got a light in it too that's supposed to be on when it's running. Put my amp meter back on and we'll see if the magic smoke comes out or not. Okay, I'm going to go turn the power on. I just want the camera running in case something happens. I'll have it on film. I'll come out here and we'll uh, test it. Power's on. I don't see any smoke pouring out. I guess that's a good thing. Um, get my phone. Turn the Wi-Fi back on. So compressor two should draw the same amount of amps as before compressor one. Should be operating better. See any lights in here yet? I don't know if there is any. I thought it had an LED light. 
There not. All right. I got them backward because this one's got the min max on it. So we have before about 35, 36 startup and uh, 15 running, which the running will stay the same. Auto, amps, this one's delayed. This one has. Let's see. Max cameras on it. I can't tell if you can see that or not, so I'll just watch it and read it out. nervous tell you the truth so this one shows 16 amps so far So, that says 7 amps, that says 16 still. Let me go to. Okay. 13 amps, and this one. Amps. Fifteen amps. That uh, shows the compressor's running. Compressor two. Compressor one. Fifteen amps. Turn it off. And we'll start it again. Positive note, the red error light on the control board is not blinking yet. <laughs> I have to could have swore this easy start had a LED light in it. It's like an error. And this is the Bluetooth one. Alright, while we're letting that reset. All right, we're gonna start it again. Two point eight amps right now. It's probably on a timer. I want to say before we were at least 30 amps at 35 startup.
10 amp startup. I'm gonna move the compressor too. Catch a startup on that one. Nothing. Now we're drawing 1500 watts on compressor one. I think I remember this total system when both compressors are on, it's close to 3000 watts. Twenty one amps on that, down to fourteen. And we're pulling twenty eight hundred. Let's look at our running amps over here. Fourteen amps. Fourteen and a half amps. So each compressor is pulling the same amount of power. Turn this to off. I'm going to go kill the AC power again so I can work on the others. Easy start. Alright, so compressor 2, brown wire off the easy start uh, to the yellow wire going to the compressor. This is the yellow wire was right here on this. Since we worked on this capacitor, now we're working on this one. Yellow wire was on here, it's a thick one, goes to the compressor, goes through that hole, going that way. Pull that off, brown wire's got to go to it, put the heat shrink on it, now i got to put this terminal fitting on there and connect them together. Alright. we got the terminal fitting on there. on there. I'm going to put a piece of heat shrink on here. I mean there's some on here but I like one, two, one like glues it together.
right now. Make someone pull it up. Let me turn this off. Alrighty. So next it says to take the yellow wire off this uh, yellow wire off of here that goes to the heart to this start coil. So this is the yellow wire. So we're going to take this one off. Like I said, these start coils get replaced, uh, capacitors get replaced by the easy starts. Take this off, go over here. Uh, once again, they're tied together. So now I gotta separate them. Um, let me get their wires. I'm a little nervous about touching them. They have a charge in them. Every once in a while, I get a little tingle. Okay, so this one goes back on. I don't. You got the dogs? Yeah, I got the dogs. Okay. Holy cow, people come over. Alright, um, so I got that one. So I got the yellow wire pulled off. Now it says remove the red wire off the start coil that goes to the run coil. That's this whole thing right here. And then we'll follow it over. Pull this out. And at least there'll be less wires in this damn thing. Alright. So really I could take these two coils out. I don't have my screwdriver bit, or do I? Let me, uh, let me do that. Give me a second. So I'm going to go ahead and physically remove these two start capacitors since we're not using them. There's less junk in here. Back in 2021, when that board blew out and I was having bearing issues, I went ahead and replaced all these capacitors when I did the board. I was in here, I was like, capacitors are cheap, just replacing them. So there's one I came for spares. You never know when you might need one. Careful, probably charged. All right, now we'll put this back on here. Now it says we got the red wire removed. Now it says orange wire is going to go where the red wire was on this one. Pretty sure red wire was on the left. Yellow wire earlier was on the right. So, orange wire right here is going to go. So 
hopefully you can see that. Orange wire is connected to there. Red wire had jumped over to there. Uh, this yellow wire was here. It's now going to the brown wire. Orange is hooked up. All we have left is white and black still. So, uh, we'll do black glass because we know it goes up here. Now it says the white wire goes to where the yellow wire was, which is on this side. Go on there. Figures. How does that one go on with no issue? This one doesn't. That doesn't feel right. Here. So, I'm going to turn the camera off for a minute so this video is not five hours long. Okay, got the yellow, sorry, the white wire on there. Now I had to chip a piece of plastic off to get that to go down. Why is this? There we go. So now we got to figure out this is the hard part. This is the only one that really doesn't make sense. Because these two black wires, I mean, as far as kind of easy to figure out the rest of them. The black wire is going to go to the other relay, number six position. So this shows two and four are blank. So two and four are blank over here. Six should be the other thick wire, which is here it says. If you look at the diagram, follow six down, cover it up, it says yellow wire, I think, but it's not, because over here we have a yellow wire and a blue wire, that's actually one and two, blue and yellow, blue and yellow, so like I said, the coloring code doesn't match perfectly on this unit, so, it's one of these two orange wires. And if it's identical to the bottom one, it's the thick wire on the outside. Let me show you. Let me flip this around. So, relay compressor one, we went with this black wire. That's number six position. Over here, I think it's this thick orange wire right here. I know it's not these two. I trace these down. So let's look at it. It says on here, it says on here it's number, look at number nine. So that's the number eight in the middle. So that's got to be, no, that's the number six. So here, zero, one, the six is the top right. But if you look here, 
two and four are the blank ones with no wires. Those right there are the blank ones with no wires. So it's not those two. Um, so it's got to be piggybacked and it's in the corner. So if it's not this top, it's not the top right one, it's got to be this one right here on the outside, just like we did with the other one. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. So we're going to go with thick orange one because it does go in the hole go in that direction toward the compressor and this other orange one goes down to your L2 hotline so we're going to piggyback off of that one because I can't piggyback off anything else there's nothing up on the top right and these two are control wires this is your power in and that's your power out to your compressor this off. Oh, there we go. And they give you no extra wire. That's it. I mean, it's going in the hole. Okay. So, black wire is going to go here. So again, let me cut off the stranded wires. I'm going to have to shove this way up here because i got no extra wire. Okay. Right, give me a second. Okay, I'm back. I had to pick this up right here. And it's the wrong one. That's not the one I was using. using these on AC power they're really meant for DC what it's doing I think it's since this is coming in after your relay it's taking power as it comes in going to the compressor and it's charging that easy start so we're going to go A and zero extra wire So this is going to go some of this stuff out of the way. That easy start right there. That easy start right there. Uh, we got plenty of easy start cable. I just gonna have to zip tie the heck out of the strainer and leave it. That's got to go there. I can't restrain that any. weather it's cooling off outside it's supposed to be getting some rain okay so I'll put this up right here that's another thing this needs to go back here actually this over here I'm gonna pull this out right here I may have to reroute it when I'm done but I gotta have Here, this goes in right here. Okay, that's huh. it's not normally supposed to go over to.
there. I gotta get that up there somehow. Sorry, this player they are. I was say that's probably going to be on those players. guys pay attention. I'm going to turn the power. Let me know if you see any smoke. Okay, so very important. I forgot one thing. Luckily, I peer checked myself before I plugged the turn power on. You gotta have this DC wire hooked back up before you energize with AC, or you'll screw that board up. Light on. A little green light. All right, now. That's a good sign. I don't see any smoke. All right, so power's back on. You know that's line one. I'm gonna go line two right here. Can you guys see that? So we're on amps, AC, min max, and then we'll put this on line one. Oops. Put this on line one. Amps. Amps AC. Amps AC. I'll put it where you guys can see. This is the one we care about right now this is the compressor too. I'll watch the other one. Okay. Connect my phone back to the Wi-Fi. So we should get like 10 amps, 10 amps instead of 35 and 35. Cool only. Wi-Fi dropped off. That's the sucky thing is when it sees another Wi-Fi signal where there's actual internet, it wants to go to it. I'm still trying to bring up the app. See, source is off, go so cool only.
Nine amps peak over here on one. Eight and a half amps. That's one compressor. There's the other compressor. Seventeen amps was the max. So before it was what, 35? 30, 35? 17. Let's, let's go off then max. Pulling 11 amps. It's cool outside. It'd be pulling 15 if it was hot. And over right here it says we're pulling 8.5 amps. And 2700 watts. That will creep up to 3000. Uh, so if you're at a 30 amp hooked up in an RV park, you gotta have everything on to run your AC. The whole reason I'm doing this. Uh, Easy starter so I could load share off my inverter and uh, run off a small generator. Or if I'm at a 30 amp RV park, I could load share. Right? So 8.9 and 11. So let me go back to. Uh, I don't have the back on the AC. So it's not circulating air across the coil, so it will get hot and kick out of the if I let it keep on there. The goofy thing is I could have sworn these easy starts had indicators on them. Air indicators or everything is good indicators. I don't see a damn LED light in there anywhere. Oh well. We'll start it one more time. You're supposed to cycle these several times. Um, Okay, compressor one is at five. Fans are started. 1.6 amps on the blower motor. Blower motor's at five amps to start. That's probably on a timer. So we're pulling less than two amps on the blower motor. And I gotta start putting everything in because I think we've got rain moving in. Let's see what we're pulling over here on the watchdog. 360 watts right now, so that's the TV and the blower.
on here quick. Five amps. That's all I got on startup on that one. Let's see what this one says. It's crazy low. I said it takes five times, but then it keeps coming down. All right, here we go. This one going on pretty soon. Going 1500 watts almost. Running amps is nine over here. Oh, the compressor's kicking on. It goes to high speed on the fan, too. 11 amps was the peak. I like it. 2600 watts. All right, I'm going to. Turn this off, let it cool off for a second, and then I'm going to switch over to batteries and inverter and see what shows up. Bumped up the temperature, let this cycle off. We're going to go turn the solar trailers off. So we're actually running off this 8,000 watt inverter over here. I actually got a 6,500 and 8,000. This one I'm just testing. I got it feeding power into the other one as like a triple charger. No RV batteries. Like 800, 900 amp hours are full. That's in here. Turn this off. So now we're on inverter only. Alright, hang on. All right, so now we're on the GoPower 3000. So let's see what happens. Pull up the shot. So 236 watts out, 280 watts out. All we have on right now in the house is a TV, maybe a small fan, um, refrigerator, which is separate inverter with same batteries, and now the air conditioning. So let's see if it, she trips. Because it used to would trip right after it started. Five amps. Pulling almost 700 watts out, 600. Pressure just kicked on, now we're pulling 15, 1600 watts out of the batteries. And seven amp running amps. Here goes our second stage. 23,000 watts almost, 2,900, 11 amps, five and a half. Now it's cool outside, so that's definitely helping. 3,400 watts, so it will trip that inverter before long. 3,400. Before she trips, I mean it's holding up, but man, it's definitely pushing my luck. If I was gonna run the AC, I'd have to kill TV, fans, everything off. So I don't want it to trip. So let's do this. I ran it, but that's not the goal. The goal is to run off of this load chair, off of like a 30 amp connection or a generator. Alrighty. I start buttoning everything up. Okay, so I zip tied these up right here and here and here and here so they shouldn't want to go up or down. And then I'm just going to put the cover back on. And I'm not going to seal this up yet because I need to get some rubber to put underneath those uh, soft darts. 